Hi, uh, I'm Barry Underwood, uh, your host of Nature's Watercolors. We welcome you to the program in our new studio here. Uh, it's uh, an impact. Uh, first time I've been in this one. We've uh, we've been in we've been in the big sound stage uh, for so long that uh, you know this is nice and small and uh, quaint and so so here we are and today we're here with with Mickey and uh, otherwise known as Michael Cusick, the, the world traveler. So how are you doing? Pretty good. So, pretty good. It's been uh, it's been a while since we've done one of these. So oh, yeah. uh, uh, so. We're kind of rusty, but yeah, not a problem. <laughs> um, so you've you've been on an adventure. Yes, uh, we went. And, we went basically to an, uh, what they call the Rock Islands of Palau, and it's basically halfway around the world. It is between here and there is a twelve-hour time difference. So, so literally half halfway, halfway around, around the world. world. So, yeah. well, is that including uh, daylight savings time? So. Uh, you, you cross the international <laughs> time zone. <laughs> <laughs> so, you want to show the uh, sure. show them show them where we started here out of Hartford and went halfway around the world to the island of Palau, and the next big island group next to it is the Philippines. So you can imagine that we're out there. And, and how long did it take you to get there? It was roughly about a 22-hour flight. Wow. <laughs> Almost a whole day. And basically, it's a, it's a whole day fly. Even, even though it's only 12 hours. Right. So, but Just layovers and everything layovers too. and change so, planes. And you know, that makes it, uh, yeah. makes it... It's a long flight. Right. So it's above Australia, where, yep. where you were. Yeah. And, uh, and, um, we have a little friend here. Uh, you tell us a little bit about, uh, about our, little, our little friend. Uh, and we'll, well, some of the street vendors, they, as you're walking down the streets, and they'll have the carvings, and this one just happened to be a turtle made out of uh, a coconut shell. Hmm. Yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> so, the top of a coconut shell. And yeah. So and pretty. people are very, they can do whatever they have to do to make a buck. And some are very artistic, some are pretty good carvers. And it's amazing what you can find for practically nothing. Really? Sure. So, so what would that, in, in U.S. dollars, what, what would something like that? Uh, Probably $15, $20 here in the States, where I think we only paid like two bucks for it. Oh, well, okay. And so, they were so happy to get two bucks for it. Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, if you went down to the Cape or you had something or something oh, like sure. that, that thing would be... 50, you know, 60 bucks. <laughs> probably, <laughs> yeah, it probably would be. So, oh, yeah. And this other item that you have here. Uh, well, so. it's, this is called a, a reef hook. Okay. You actually attach, this goes to your, to your BC, your flotation device, and you can actually hook into uh, some of the old coral that is dead by now or some of the rocks that you can actually hang in there with the currents so you're not hanging on with both hands. So you're actually just floating, like almost in midair. You just hook, you're hooked in there and you're just floating right along. So if you get your cameras, you don't have to worry about one hand holding here and you just float around. It's allowed a few places around the world, but not every place allows. I think you told me earlier you couldn't use, you can't use that in the Caribbean because no, because of the the the, the coral is still growing, whereas uh, like in Palau. Uh, to me, it looked like the coral had died years, you know, centuries ago. So you're allowed to hook into it. And basically what the coral is now is all limestone. And every now and then, uh, some of the, the tunnels and hallways actually collapse and form new uh, channels. But that was pretty cool. You could hook up and just, you're right there, like floating like Superman. Because otherwise you're holding on down yeah. there. Yeah, and if you have a camera, yes. it's kind of tough to do everything and True. hold on. Well. But this way here, and they also do that in uh, one of the places where the current is, they have the sharks come in. So actually you can hook in and just watch the sharks as they swim by, which is pretty cool. 
Sounds it. <laughs> still, still not for me. It never has been. So, <laughs> it's, you know, not for me down there, you know. But uh, you know, it's something that you like to do, and oh, uh, yeah, and uh, enjoyable. You enjoy you enjoy doing it. So that's that's great, and then, and uh, the people at home get to get to see get what to I see, see what you see. Yeah, you know, because most of them will never have a opportunity to go either. No, and, and so most people. Uh, Basically, what you see on TV, like Discover Your History, this is what you're going to see. Mm -hmm. But to know somebody that's actually been there, ooh, with a camera, this is what, what it's shooting. There it is. It's a little different. Yeah. So what else can you tell us about there? About uh, Palau? Palau? Palau. Palau. <laughs> Palau. <laughs> well, they're, actually, it's called the Rock Islands of Palau. There's approximately 600... 32 islands in this main island and only 27 of them are actually inhabited so we're the, the bigger islands are inhabited where you get the smaller ones where if you, it's the size of a like a coffee table or a dining room table if it has vegetation on it it's an island so it could be this like, could have like, like this table. Sure, you could have and, vegetation. And it would be called on it. an, an island. island. Would it be named or? I uh, no, know, no. I, I'm, just the bigger islands. Would I have ask names. that question, you know, because because <laughs> <laughs> you know they're, they're you, know, you, you never know. You know, but somebody probably owns it, right? Well, it's part of the whole it's chain. It's part of the yeah. Okay, right. but you can no. tell how the the, uh, the ocean levels have dropped because that's actually the limestone coral that is, was which is now the islands. Well, um, so I, I know you know we have a lot we have a lot of pictures that we're going to be looking at, looking at yeah. but um, um, what can you tell you you said that um, tell us a little bit about your, about your tour part of it where you because um, you told me something earlier about the oh one about, of the one of the islands where the uh, where where boat actually anchors uh, it was actually called Pelalu. And during World War II, my dad, during the service, was on this particular island. Told me all about it, where this was, where the, the Japanese gun mount was, where the caves were. There's an airstrip there. Oh, okay, well, because now that we've gone out the Western Pacific, everybody has a to-do to list or a bucket list. I figured, well, if I have the chance to walk in my dad's footsteps, take advantage of it. So on this trip that we took, this particular island we stopped at, the cruise director says, we're going to Pelolo. Well, I looked at him and told him, well, there's an airstrip there, there's caves here, there's a gun mount here, and he says, he says you've been here. No, my dad was, he told me all about it. It's, then they don't get too many uh, descendants of the American soldiers that actually come back and dive the, the region. So they were just as thrilled as I was to walk in my dad's steps and have somebody there that was there. It was pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, you got treated better because of it. Differently. Yeah. yeah differently. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, and word get out to the islands and, oh, yeah, he's, somebody's here. And it's, <laughs> it's, okay, it's pretty cool. Well, it is. You know, yeah. it's, that's, that is, you know, I mean, nice, nice to be able to. My, my dad was on a uh, was on on a ship floating around the ocean, so uh, you know. Yeah. Well, dad <laughs> was an island jo an island hopper, so he oh. was here and here, and through his military records, That's I could trace his footsteps on paperwork. But now to actually walk on his footsteps is it's oh, kind of I can check that off my list. It is kind of neat. You know, oh yeah. So and, and uh, you know, so it was worthwhile. Yeah, yeah we were gone for. Oh, about three weeks. So we had That's a long, well, of course, it's a long trip out there, too. Trip. So I guess if you're going to take it, you may as well take it. Go so, for it. You know, if you're going to stay. So. A week wouldn't, a week <clears throat> to 10 days is uh, not enough. So you want to push it to maybe 14, 16 days, have a couple of days to relax, and then a the long flight home. Mm. <laughs> yeah, a long flight there, a long yeah. flight home. So. It's... The killer isn't getting there, it's coming home because now you live in the same day twice. So like if you leave on a Saturday morning, you come home on a Saturday. 
and to try to get to sleep, it's not that good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, let's it would, face it, 12 hours is enough to really rack your system anyway. Oh, sure. You know, to, if you're, you know, you're 12 hours away, and yeah. even though it took you 20, 22 to get there. <laughs> but, uh, oh. So nice, nice information about. It was um, interesting. It, yeah. 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 So how does that compare? Like, okay, the water, um, the, you know, just just the. How how does it compare to the Caribbean? Oh, will it's you, completely will you, will, different. You go? It's completely different. Uh, whereas the Caribbean is, basically, it's almost like what you say, an enclosed area, where, out towards the Philippines, you're in open ocean. So the currents come through, it's completely different. It's more of a blue-green water. My wife thought it was one of the prettiest sites, the color water that she's seen in our travels. Really? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. you get the, the currents that flush all the debris and stuff out, so the water looks nice and clean. It was pretty cool. And one of the spots where the, the boat actually anchored we're looking at the beach over there, and a couple of people questioned, is like, we've seen that beach. Well, the cruise director says, you should, because that shot Survivor there, it was called Survivor Oolong. So you can see the, the beach, and they have a plaque on, on the shoreline that says they shot Survivor. But if you happen to look on top of the hill, it's a cell tower. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, you never oh. saw that in a show. <laughs> oh. But yeah, it was pretty cool. So my wife actually walked on Survivor Beach. Oh. So that was pretty cool. She enjoyed that. Yeah. That's what. That, yeah, because she doesn't dive, right? No. So so all. So you dove, and, and she had to find other things to do. Uh, oh, they had kayaks so. on a, on a, on a belt, and then you could take off and stay in the air, and she had a blast. Mm -hmm. So basically, you're in where they anchor. You're in a um, in a cove. So you're out of the main water. You're protected by all the little islands, so you don't get the big rocks and the waves and Nice and flat and calm, and so for her it was fantastic. She could just kayak out, paddle there, and walk the beach. And to actually say that, yeah, I walked on Survivor Beach. No, they. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's, well, yeah. yeah it's the famous. That was that was that was on TV. That was pretty cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, that, yeah. Um, well, we'll talk. I, I know we, we, there's a picture of, of where you stayed. So uh, in, in yeah, we'll picture, get to that. So we'll get to that later. And because uh, that's kind of a novel thing too, so oh. <laughs> a real novel thing. So <laughs> it's called the liverboard. Yeah, and it was we had a good time. We're good. So, um, so we get to the pictures then. I want is the that show. Uh, that sure. Show? Okay. Let's go with it. All right. Let's open the laptop here and uh, and take a look at what we got. So this first picture, what's... Uh, They're called batfish. 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 I guess I could see that. You know, they kind of look like a, kind of look like a, a bat. More or less, mm. more or less. So. And they're, how, how big are they? I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to tell by this. Uh, eight, six to eight <laughs> inches. Six to eight inches. They're more triangular than like a fish fish. They kind of like an angel fish? So uh, in, that, in, that, in that era. In that. Uh, oh, there's a big shark. Well, that's where, we, where we're using the, uh, the reef hook to actually hang on the, uh, in the currents. And the sharks will come by and they'll, they're within feet of you. And you're not in the cage. No cage. <laughs> No okay. cage. They don't bother you. No. I mean, it's, is it kind of like um, where you were before um, when you were in Fiji? I believe it was. Uh, where we talked about sharks and uh, Fiji, so and then uh, they they don't touch you because they know they're fed. They're, are they? they they have a feeding station. They uh, okay. And so it's similar at, to yeah. similar to that. So they get fed, so they don't feed on the tourists. Is that? Yeah. Is that? Is yeah. that? That's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> but whereas. Um, in Palau, that's, you're in the open ocean, so the feeding so, station is there. They don't come out and actually feed the sharks. You're just 
you're hooked into the reef and you're just watching the sharks come in. There's, in the distance, you must have seen 50, 60 sharks. And they'll swing by and make a tour and let you know that we're here. But they don't touch, they, they don't touch no, any, any no. so. Because that would be kind of. A little iffy. Yeah, 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 I guess that would be the good word for it. Uh, but no, nah, it's basically, you don't bother them, they won't bother they won't, you. No. So you know, as long as you, so um, your tour guides, I'm sure that when you went diving, you were with you were with guides, right? Oh yes, so, oh, yeah. So they you're kinda, never on your own. So, so they must have things to kind of keep them away if if something did, if one uh, did come. Actually, not here. No. No. But they're far enough away where the sharks will come in and just and move away. They're not sitting on top of you. Oh. Hmm. Iffy. <laughs> Iffy. Iffy. I like that. <laughs> The next picture. Come on. So what do we have here? I see... Clownfish. Clownfish. And the anemones. And these are more what they call blanket anemones. They, they'll get about the size of this tech coffee table. Whereas in the Caribbean they have like little clusters. And if, they, if the anemones sense more movement in the water than normal, They'll close. They'll close up. And then all you see is just the, the clownfish popping out of the, the anemones. And that's what happened there? They, it was they, ready to go. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. And an onion. Yeah. Looks like oh, an onion. Looks yeah. like, almost like an onion. That's what I saw the picture before. It's just, oh, that's an onion. And that's basically <laughs> what the blanket enemy looks like when it, when it closes up. Oh, okay. Oh. And it was the, the, the uh, two clownfish that were there. And it must have sensed something, and you watch it just close right up. It must have been, yeah, sensed you guys, probably. Yeah, one of uh, us. So who knows? Yep. That's a giant clam. Okay. It's, uh, I'd say, roughly about three and a half feet across. Whoa. And all these movies that you see, where the uh, swimmers and divers get their feet caught in a clamshell and they can't get out. That's only in the movies. <laughs> For somebody to do that, it's impossible because it has a, a membrane across its two shells. It has, um, it's a filter, filter feeder. So it has an intake and, a, and a, an exhaust. And it just moves water, you can see it moving. But to get your foot caught in there, it, it's not going to happen. It's not going to no, happen. No, so, like you say in the movies, not in no. just in the movies. cartoons. That's but. it. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's called a leafy scorpion fish. It's probably about six inches long. And if you watch them enough, you can actually see them uh, use their outside fins to walk on. Sometimes you'll see them swim, but most of the time you'll see them actually walk on the bottom. Kind of does look like leaves, you know? So I guess that's a good name for it. Good name you know? for that one. That's for sure. And what's the... Uh, also brain coral and... Up the, at the top there, yeah, that one, and, so... Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> it's called a mantis shrimp. I seen it coming out of its hole and I started going down to it and all of a sudden it started retracting back into the hole. Because their claws and the body, there's so many colors on it, it looks like, just like a rainbow. So I had to back up a little bit for in order for it to come out of its hole a little bit to show itself. So the picture's not the best picture, but it's... Uh... But if you can rotate it, you'll, it'll come out a little better. But oh, really? that's okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Oh, that, that's interesting. That looks like a painting. It yeah, really, it really sure. does. That's a... Uh, One of the green turtles. Okay. It was just laying in the co soft coral. Whether it was it's resting or a cleaning station, it was there for the picture taking. It's camouflaged. Pretty much. Pretty much pretty there, much. too. And... Uh, 
Oh, what a nice, what a nice coloring, the, you know. Was... There are different colors out in the Western Pacific than they are in the Caribbean, where out there they will be eating soft coral, where in the Caribbean they eat the sponge. So the shell turns different colors. Wow. Well, Quite unique. Mm, that's for sure. Well, a little bit further away from him. Or a little bit wider shot of a wider of shot, shot uh, should say. It was actually just laying in the coral. Good sized turtle. So, yeah, it was so. probably about two and a half, three foot. Yeah, they're benign. They're not snappers. Oh or no, 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 they'll no, just so. look at you and say, "Yeah." What do you want? Yeah, <laughs> tourists. <laughs> it's ours. <laughs> yeah, but it is. You know, it, it's just you know. It looks like it has like a fluorescent, a fluorescent to it. It does, yeah. uh, to it. Well. Indeed, you can get close. Well, yeah. Well, it's, you know, you got to be nice and quiet to sneak up on them. Like you, like you have in some of the other, yeah. uh, some of the other shots that you've taken, and uh, people say you sneak up on them. Oh yeah, you can't make any noise. Well, yeah. you can't make any noise in the water. <laughs> Well, you can, but uh, you know, no, nothing's going to hear you. Yeah, so. right. And here's a clownfish looking at you. It's a what? Clownfish. Okay. Oh, okay. See yep, yep. Yep. At the top there. Right. That's one of the so. blanket animals that closed up, and they come in uh, the colors, anywhere from blues to purples to reds to pinks. This one just happened to be blue, and he just. Clownfish is looking at you like, hey, this is my area. <laughs> Get out of here. This is my Oh yeah. Uh, you know, this is my territory. <laughs> and they're one of the few fish that will actually survive inside the anemone. Whereas other fish will get uh, uh, stung by them and eventually uh, eaten by the anemone. Whereas the clownfish, they're like the uh, cleanest shrimps of the Caribbean. They keep it uh, clean and they're the janitors. Oh, okay. All right. The cousins. Some are called cinnamons. These are, uh, I'm not sure if they're called blue stripes or not, but um, there's all different varieties of the, uh, the clownfish. I know I've asked you this question before. How do you know the names of all these, all these, uh, <laughs> In the Caribbean? Well, I have the books for the Caribbean. Okay. They've been diving for years. But being in that part of the world, you ask the people that have been there, and they also have the, uh, the books of the fish. Just like uh, for the Caribbean they have, they also have the uh, Pacific regions of the books. So in something that you don't know, you, once you we go, go through back it and, and, you, and you, you start going through so. the, the books, and, or you even you ask the cruise director, what's that, what's that? Okay, and it makes you little notes, and. Hmm. So now you know. There you go. Yeah. So yeah, yeah because you always have the names of the <laughs> of what they are. Well, nice so. to know what you're talking about, or well, I mean, what, what it is. Well, yeah. that's a fish. Well, I, I, you, you could be just saying, you could be making up anything, and I, okay, I don't know any difference. <laughs> <laughs> but, nice color, really yeah. nice color on that. You know. The, the blues are really blue, and the, the uh, yellows are really yellow. You know, I mean, they're out. You find the colors are diff different. I don't know if I asked this question, but um, the coloring of there as opposed to the Caribbean. Is two it, different, two different parts. Is it you, better? You're gonna have the bright colors in the Caribbean. You're gonna have the bright colors, let's see, in the Western Pacific where we were, or the Southern Pacific in Fiji where we were. It all depends on what's in there for vegetation, what they're eating, but the colors are going to out. Are so the colors depend upon what vegetation is there, there and, what, and eating. what the what their food sources are, yeah. and that more than it does the water itself. The water itself. Yeah. Okay. That's another pair of bat fish. Mm-hmm where some have just uh, a couple, one major stripe and the rest of it is dark, where these are uh, almost like an angelfish where they got 
uh, the different markings on them. Nice looking fish, that's for sure. How are they edible? No, uh, to be no, like this. Because like they're, they're small. Fish, these, yeah. So most of these fish are like, small. Like bluegills. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And every now and then you run into a pot of dolphins. Uh, these were called spitter dolphins. And there were times where we're making the circles with the boats. And you could actually come up and do, it, do like a twist in the water. It's like, whoa, look at this. Oh. But if you're not quick enough with the cameras, you're not going to catch them. You're like flipper. Basically. <laughs> I don't know how many, how many of you people at home remember flipper, but, you know, that's... Same thing. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Well, remember Gilligan's Island? Yeah. Same thing. I think, every, <laughs> I think everybody remembers Gilligan's Island, so... This is called Sweet Lips. That's the actual name of the fish. And if you look at the, the mouth, it looks like it, it's wearing lipstick. It looks like it missed and got lipstick on its gills and I mean on its yeah, fins. Yeah, it, it and, missed itself and, a little and, bit. And, and so, <laughs> a few places, but uh, I would have said it was a zebra. Some, it's some kind of a zebra fish because it looks like it's got the zebra stripes. You know, yeah, but, but it's actually called sweet lips. But another, another blue and blue and yellow. You know, it's so. just a different varieties of fish they have compared to the Caribbean. And this is just some coral underneath it there? Plate coral, yeah. Plate coral. Mm -hmm. cool. Is that the stuff that you said you could actually hook into with, with your hook? Uh, no, this is actually live, yeah. so we don't, you don't touch the live coral. Uh, where we were hooking into was actually uh, old dead coral was a part of an island that actually collapsed. So you were able to, to use it as uh, like a hooking. Okay, uh, well, okay, I'm going to ask this question. How do you know if it's dead or alive? Oh, you can tell. It's, uh, the coloring has gone on it. It's more or less uh, uh, white or gray. Whereas the live coral, you have different, different colors. That it could be green, red, purples. But once it dies, it becomes uh, the limestone, which is basically white. Mm -hmm. okay. And once you, when you have something like that, you can, that's okay to touch, where most places you can't touch. Mm. And this is on the bottom of what they call um, Blue Hole. It was like uh, where one of the, uh, uh, it collapsed and formed a, uh, like a sinkhole. And just going down, it was getting dark. So I said, let's see what colors are here. Because uh, with the flashlights, you, you couldn't see too much. So once you hit, the, hit it with the strobes, it opened it. And it's colors, even at 80 feet down, it's colors. Mm. More clownfish and enemies. These are called cinnamon clownfish. Yeah, okay, I can see that. It looks like cinnamon. Yeah, a little bit. But again, they have the blue, the blue on them. So that is actually, I mean, they all seem to have that in common. The, you know, going back to the, the striping mm -hmm. and the, you know, where they're blue and they got a yellowish to them, so yep. so, like then you so get that into must the be what they're. It just must be their food source there. It's yes, got a, probably. It's something. But also you have the ones that you see in the paper, like Nemo, with the orange and the white spots. Mm -hmm. Still looking for him. Yeah. So you just haven't found yeah. him yet. No, um, so. They're gonna find him more more or less on the uh, on the barrier reef. You know, you're more abundant on on that. Whereas like in Fiji and where we were in Palau, you're gonna get the the cousins. Uh huh. Okay. But it's still the, so. the same same family. This is this another uh, another picture of the turtle? Uh, that's another turtle, or but different. he must be an oldie because that spot on the top of his head is a barnacle. So it, figure how long does the barnacle take to grow? So you're going to figure this turtle has been around for a, a lot few, of years. A few years. And just resting. I never saw so many turtles that would just rest on the bottom. Hmm. In any of the other places? Well, I, I, I know you've done some turtle pictures, you know, and other ones, but. Uh, Not as much this, as. This, this have more? More than. More than what, I've known, what you've ever seen yeah. in, in any one place in that one you've pla had yeah. to gone to.
That's the one, you, one of your other cousins that are clownfish. Okay. <laughs> you had a lot of cousins. Oh, no, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> and there they are. They basically nest inside the anemone. Uh -huh. And once they uh, begin their, uh, uh, once they lay their eggs, uh, they stand guard. So once you start coming close, they'll come up to you, and you can actually see the little teeth they have in your mouth. Oh, really? They'll huh? let you know that, hey, this is our area. <laughs> no matter how big you are? Oh, they really? don't care. No. They don't care. Oh. So they would bite you? Oh, well, they'll nip at you. They'll nip at you. Sure. Yeah, yeah. This is not gonna, especially if you're in your wetsuit. Uh, yeah. They're not. Oh. And there's another, um, actually, this turtle's on a cleaning station. And if you look to the left of its neck, you can see a small fish. and was actually uh, eating the parasites off its neck. I wonder how often he comes there for his cleaning. It's a cleaning station. I'm not know? sure if he even makes appointments. <laughs> how much he pays, you know? I mean, maybe an egg, a turtle egg, you know? Sardines, I don't know. I don't know. It's hard to say. <laughs> yeah, who knows, yeah, it's, huh. Let's see, yeah, like a plecostomus and that the, do the, the clean. Sure, and, yeah. And that, so that's kind of what they're, I mean, I guess that's kind of what they're like. Yeah. But, uh, they're, these are just little fish. That, yeah, little um, fish, so. yeah. And it's, they're actually eating, you can see them right. eating away up at the neck. And he's looking at its side a little bit. And he's still the fish and he's going and cleaning. Just like the, uh, the fish have cleaning stations, we have, where they like to have the big groupers and stuff, when you get the small fish that go inside the, the mouth and the gills, and everybody knows it's a safe place where you won't get eating at the skin. <laughs> you hope? <clears throat> well, if the fish want their, you know, their teeth clean, they won't do it. Okay. So, they make a deal. Yeah, let's words, make a deal. I guess. Then oh. you can get a little closer. Mm-hmm. Now you can now you can actually see the little fish. Yep, there's right a on. little fish on the yep. on the left hand side there. And you can see the turtle is basically falling asleep. <laughs> yeah. Wow, I mean that's that's nice. That's a nice that's really a nice picture right there. Yep. You know, of it. And everybody wants to know how how close were you? This close. Really? Yeah. That's so you, if you're very quiet and you can sneak up on them, people look at you like, really? Yeah. <laughs> All right, and what, the, what do we have here? I this mean, I see it in the middle there, but. Uh, it's, that's called a yellow spotted scorpion fish. That's down inside the coral head, and it's probably, I'd say no more than two inches long. And people say, well, what are you looking the coral for? Because you may find that's something. What you, yeah. This is what you're going to find. Oh. It was pretty cool. Yeah. But it's different varieties that you've never seen. What's out in the Western Pacific as compared to the Caribbean. Yeah. That's an, a, a juvenile angelfish. It's no bigger than the size of a quarter. Really? Yeah. Hmm. It come up out of a little coral and started dancing around. I'm looking, well, those are clams to the left of it. So you're going to, so it's not that. that yeah, big. it's small. Yeah. Well, like you can see here. Yeah, so, wow. Again, nice looking, nice looking little fish. Yeah, there's abundant of them. Really? That's those are like the ones you'd want in your aquarium. Yeah. You know, yeah. So. yeah. But eventually they will get bigger. Yeah. Oh, so this is like a baby one? Yeah. Uh, is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is our hotel. Okay. Yeah, this is this is what we talked about earlier. Yeah. So when I say we're dropping anchors, this is what we're dropping anchor with. And why did you stay on that as opposed to staying at a uh, at a hotel, a hotel. Uh, from the hotel to the dive sites would actually be uh, about an hour and a half to two hour small boat ride. 
So you're spending four hours a day just in a boat going from the dive site back to the hotel, whereas on the liverboard, it drops anchors. You have a, the, they still have the same boats, but within five minutes, you're at the dive sites. Which is, you know, Fantastic, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. It, holds, it holds 16 passengers, so it's, you're not overrun by everybody. Uh, they, they do have a chef, and every day there's um, fresh meals, new meals. You'll come up with snacks. It's fantastic. Really? Oh. So that that compares with like a, a I, don't, I, I don't know if it's like a five star. I would say. Uh, like really you're, something. Yeah. And there's, he, they put on quite a bit of food. So it's, it's kind of like a cruise ship type of type, Pretty much. type of atmosphere yeah. then where you would uh, uh, so there were you said it holds 16, 16 passengers, 16 passengers. Mm -hmm. so so that in your in your dive group I mean the ones that actually went doing the dive we had 16 people with us that on that trip but your wife didn't it holds 16 it passengers holds 16 passengers but, and how many how many actually do, dove with you do you, do you know um my wife didn't dive in one of the other wives. There were only two non-divers. Oh, okay. So 14 of you went diving every yeah. day? Yeah. And how, long, and how long did you stay down for, and, you know, as you were getting all these pictures? And, and they what? do have a time limit. We do, okay. To an hour or so, but they, once they see how, uh, how comfortable the group is, they just said, go for it. See on the surface. So I've recorded an hour and 20 minutes and still come up with plenty of air. Uh huh. Mm. But they, once you get over an hour, they want you to come out. They do. Oh, yeah. okay. And then what? Then you go back to the boat and then. Uh, yeah, you go you know, you're back. You get on your little skiff boat. You get back to the boat, whether it's for breakfast or lunch. And then you have an uh, evening meal and you go off for your night dive. Oh. So you're basically like doing three dives, a, four dives a day. Fantastic. It was it? Yeah. yeah. Well. Sometimes you come back from one of the dives and what's this? Fried pineapple or fried bananas and. Really? It well, was tasty. Well. Oh yeah. <laughs> they, they knew how to cook that stuff. Huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, there's probably a lot of fish products and that, that that they uh, you know. Oh, uh, you had fish. You had some seafood, meat. Seafood, I should say. Products. There was seafood there. You did have. Uh, some land food, some steak and stuff, but for the most part, your meals were cooked fresh every day. You couldn't ask for, if you wanted something different, the chef would whip it up for you. Really? Well, yeah. Well, yeah, with only 16 people, yeah. that's, that's probably a... And in one of the days, they give you a, uh, a tour of the, uh, the kitchen and whatnot. Boy. <laughs> Not much room in there. No. Oh, no. Mm. No, I mean, it, it doesn't, it really doesn't look all that, of course, in, in the ocean. How's it going to look that, that big anyway? Yeah. Well, know, it's so. fairly wide, but I mean, even still with the, the kitchen, with the stove and refrigerator and everything else, you, you don't have much room. Yeah. And he do make ice cream. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. he made, has an ice cream maker. <laughs> oh. Yep. Oh, so it's homemade ice cream, too. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, wow. yeah. I have to go on there just for that. <laughs> probably a, a fairly, it was probably wasn't a, um, it, was, it was probably pretty expensive, uh, a trip like that would be, you know, as far as, um, I mean, just, just the flying and everything, you know, everything together, it, it has to be, you know, it's not like going to the Caribbean. Uh, so. No, where, where you get a couple of, couple of grand, this was actually, Towards um, almost about ten. Really. Mm. The but, flight, but it was also three weeks. Yeah. So, so we were we we're gone. And uh, the flight was it's it's got to be you know Probably a bunch of you know a bunch of layovers to, yeah. and everything to get to that point. So. Oh, we went from Hartford to Chicago, from Chicago to Honolulu, from Honolulu to Guam, then from Guam to Palau. Wow. Well, it's so. Yep. You're flying. <laughs> you had barely enough time to get from one plane 
to get to the to get the next really. plane. That's how tight everything was. Yeah. So, but that's why you want it, right? You and then you it. wonder if the baggage is going to get there. <laughs> you get to the destination and there yeah, it is. Everything, everything was shows there. up. Yeah. This is inside. Uh, there's a set of caves they have, and you can only get to them from underwater, and it's only 14, 15 feet deep. So it's doable, and you can actually breathe inside the caves because it's uh, the limestone actually breathes, mm -hmm. and the dive master had his uh, red light instead of the, the the clear light. He had turned it to red, and shined it up on the uh, on the stalactites. And oh, I'll just take a shot of this. And if you look, it looks like a set of eyes and a couple of fangs. It does. It does. So it looks if like you a, really look at it, you yeah, know? like a vampire yeah. type yeah. deal. <laughs> and it probably felt like that in there too. You know? What? So <laughs> it's like, whoa, look at this. Check mm -hmm. this out. Oh. Well, he probably knew that that was there. So oh, they, they, that's one of their their stops, and that's where they bring people and. And he probably does that like that all the time. Maybe. He, maybe. <laughs> but I took advantage of it. There you go. That's uh, Otherwise, yeah. it's just like stalactites with a you know, regular camera flash. And maybe that's all he thinks it is. See, they're just stalactites. You know? so. yeah. But with the red light on, it gives it a different effect. It does, for sure. Otherwise, it's pitch black in there. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. You have your flashlights, but with enough different, uh, with his red lens on, it made. Ooh, a little different <laughs> effect. Was and that was that in there? The the next picture there. Was yeah, that's that another. It's a there was like <clears throat> five caves uh, uh, openings in that system, where you had to come in one, go down, come up into another one, come down and come up into another one, and this is basically uh, the different minerals that have been uh, washed down from the rains. Mm -hmm. So it looks like uh, veins. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Ooh, I've different. seen that, I've seen yeah. that in some of the caves, the caverns that we've yeah. gone into over the years, yeah. where, you see, where you see that. And, uh, and you can almost, you know, um, e even, even in some of the rock formations, as in the winter time, you know, you see the ice, but it's very, very similar to that, where you, see, where you yeah. see all the, all the minerals and everything yeah. coming down there. And uh, so, and then we came out of the caves, and on TV they have this on the uh, Animal Planet. They have this uh, show called uh, Tanked, where they make aquariums. And one of the shows they were talking about uh, a cardinal clownfish, uh, um, pajama cardinal fish. It's like, oh, okay, I don't know where in the world they were taken, but we come out of the caves and what's in front of me is the, the <laughs> same fish I've seen on TV. Wow. So basically that's part of the world where that particular fish came from. And it's probably no more than two, three inches long. But to see it on TV and then actually see it in person is like, ooh, I know that one. <laughs> yeah, you didn't even have to ask about that one, did you? No, uh, no, I uh, knew that one. <laughs> well, yeah, and it's, it's, it looks like it's, uh, well, it's got a green head <laughs> yeah, with red there. eyes, and it looks like it has a, a waistband, yep. and the bottom looks like it's polka dot pajamas. Yeah, polka dot, yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, so, and see all that, it's, it's pretty neat. Yeah. yeah. That was the end of our trip. Gilligan's Island. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very well, could be. No. <laughs> so, uh, and one, one only one palm tree. Yeah, I wonder why. No, oh, they cut the rest of them down for firewood. Yeah, probably. probably <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but oh, oh, it's a, it's a neat looking uh, ending to the to our trip. To, yeah. our, to your trip, yeah. So that works. It yeah. Works really well. But, uh, and that. And then, some clouds in the sky and you know, sunset. Sun, and sunset. Here we go. Yeah. yeah. So basically, that was our last night out there. Really. And then you sailed back into home. Home. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it took at that point. It took two hours. It takes two hours to get back to where you were, and then as far as the to, oh, to where the, the, the bowl will just. 
it circles so many islands and it makes its way back into its uh, docking area. Oh, so it's, so it's on, it's always on its way back probably yeah. anyway, so. Well. And then sometimes during the night where you're sleeping. That's when they're moving. That's when they're moving. And sometimes during the days they'll actually, okay, here we go and, it, and they're moving. So you actually went to a bunch of different. Uh, uh, we went to like five different islands in that chain. Each one had their own dive sites. Mm -hmm. um, one was called Oolong, where Survivor was. Uh, there was another island uh, called Two Dogs. There's another one called, uh, well, uh, the Peleliu. And uh, not one's called uh, Malakal. So there's uh, five different of the main islands. And each one has, uh, I probably think, a dozen dive sites on each. And it, everything is, is different. You may see the same fish, but the formations are completely different. Mm. So it's a worthwhile trip. Now you said, what, 20, 27 inhabited? inhabited 27 inhabited, inhabited islands, islands, yeah, so. out of 632. What, <clears throat> yeah, let's do a little on this anyway now. Uh, what, um, how inhabited, I guess, is what, what I, you know, Oh, uh, people I mean, actually funny. living there. Um, no, some I mean, of them how, have hotels. Oh, oh, hotels and everything. So well, like resort, resorts. resort areas. Yeah. Okay, so they're so they're very, very. They're used. Very yeah. used. Where some of the bigger islands are main islands, where there's actual cities and cars and traffic, and there, where there's some of the smaller islands you get to only by boat. And the only way you get around on those smaller islands is walk. Walk. But we were we were pretty happy when, with this trip. Yeah, yeah. It's out of all your trips then that you that you've taken, you know, so Fuji far, and you know the Caribbean trips and everything. Oh, this rates right this, up this there. This rates, sure. yeah, does. Well, in the Caribbean, oh. there was World War II wasn't there, and where we were in the Western Pacific, World War II was happening, and my dad happened to have been in the Marines, and he was an island hopper, and with his military records, I could trace him where he was. Right. And well, if we're diving out that way now, well, let's see if we can do this. Right, well. And well. never knowing that this island Palau was part of the chain of Palau until we got there. Mm. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. well. I can check that off my to-do list. There you go. Sure. Yep. Yep. So. Have any other uh, trips uh, planned in the, in the Yes, we're going to Tahiti. Oh, really? Oh, okay. uh, on a liverboard similar to that. Uh-huh. Uh, same fleet, the Siren fleet. So you'll be doing the same? Same, same thing, same playing thing. in the water. Uh-huh. Yeah. Hotel so, the boat. Yeah? Yeah. How, how, when is that coming up? A year and a half. year and a half? Yeah. Oh. And well, hopefully we won't wait that long to yeah, do it. Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. You know, I know you have other other um, um, other pictures that uh, and things that we haven't seen. So you know, so we'll be. I'm sure we can get get and put something else together too. Uh, for a combination for another, of for another a couple of trips for another sure. program, and that. So we'll try not to be as long uh, as far as far as. The gap, the gap yeah. between us will try not to be quite as quite as long as we were this time, but uh, but just think we got to be in this nice studio now, and yeah. uh, you know it's it's cozy. great. It is cozy. Yeah. Yep, yep. And uh, you know it looks like there's water in back of us. So yeah, blue light <laughs> and yeah. So oh, well, that's, I think that's interesting. Been yeah. very interesting, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it at home. Um, and um, oh, everybody's talking about let's see more pictures. Well, here you go. Now you have pictures. That's it. Yep, yep. I know. Yeah, you get asked that question oh, yeah. a lot. Yeah. So, so yeah. Now, now you have more. <laughs> and uh, and we won't have to run so many reruns. <laughs> no reruns. <laughs> but anyway, so that's pretty much it. Right? Pretty much so, it. Okay. Yep. Well, thank you for tuning in. We uh, we do appreciate it. And if you if you like it, make sure you let make sure you let. Uh, Impact know about it because they would, we'd love to hear from you too. Yeah, and, and that and just like always, if you see something you want, everything is for sale. So, so you have it, and and you'll have the uh, you'll have his 
name and address on the, somewhere. Yep. On the in the credits, probably in the credits, or <laughs> you can just call just call the studio. Right. So, so thank you again, and uh, till, ne the till show. next till next time. Uh, this is uh, Nature's Watercolors.